Hey, how you doing? My name's Bruno, but uh, my good friends, uh, they call me Rocco for short. So yeah, go ahead. So, uh, you know, me being Italian, these people here, they asked me to talk to you about uh, forgiving. So uh, I'll give it a shot here, okay? So pretty sure the book says, uh, you know, if somebody uh, pops you in the jaw over here, you're supposed to turn the other cheek and let them pop you in the jaw over there. Eh, ain't gonna happen. Somebody pops me in the jaw, forget about it. In fact, more I think about this, uh, look, I ain't the one to be doing this teaching. Uh, you need to get somebody else in here later. Well, hey folks, our friend Bruno, Bruno here. Uh, it's really Bruno Tio. His friends may call him Rocky, but uh, the people that Bruno doesn't like, they call him Tio for the ogre because of his attitude toward forgiveness. So while it's a little humorous, here we are in Corona time, able to again go deep into something. And really, you and I, in principle, we all battle the same problem with forgiving others that our buddy Bruno has. Obviously, he takes it to those Italian uh, revenge-driven extremes, but what's at the bottom of it? You know, there's offense, there's hurt, there's resentment, there are these emotions that go deep. And uh, by the way, I'm Jerry Tallow. Thank you so much for joining again. Uh, I've been in ministry since the early 80s. Almost three decades of it was pastoring a local church. And so I walked with a ton of people through this journey, including myself. And I've learned as I've studied the scriptures over the years that there is a real disconnect between the decision to forgive and the emotions, all right? And oftentimes it causes us a skewed perspective. And we could go years marinating in resentment because we don't feel like we can forgive somebody. And I get that. And so there is this disconnect. But aren't you glad that Jesus clarifies this for us? So let's dig into the scriptures here. Right there in the middle of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, after give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our debts, Lord, even as we forgive our debtors. Now, this word debts and the word debtor is a Greek word that means a debt, an obligation, something owed. Jesus, right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, he says, when you pray, pray this way. So in other words, we need to practice forgiving, just like we need to practice, Lord, give me my daily bread, right? Hallowed be your name. We practice worshiping him. Uh, we practice petitioning him in the same way. We have to regularly forgive people, and he's putting it in a legal financial objective context here. And then it's expounded upon in Matthew 18. This is really big. So Jesus is talking about conflict resolution in a church, the beginning of it. And I remember how many people used to say to me, oh, uh, I don't like conflict resolution. The problem is if we don't get to the resolution, we don't get to the forgiving, right? So anyway, after this teaching, of all people, Peter comes to Jesus and he says, Lord, uh, if, if I have to forgive somebody like up to seven times, do I really need to do that? <laughs> it's a great question. It's as if he's saying, look, after seven times, this guy keeps wronging me. I mean, how about on the eighth time, I don't forgive him anymore. I do a Bruno on him, right? Doesn't that sound like Peter? And can any of you relate? I can. I can. All right. So then Jesus gives this incredible parable where he teaches it. And it, it starts in verse 23. And it starts with a servant to a king. Now, this servant, literally, the word means bond servant. That's a legal term. During this era, the law involved indentured servitude. So let's say I borrowed money from you. And uh, I didn't take care of the money or I invested it poorly or partied it away or whatever. And it came time for it to be due and I couldn't pay it. And you gave me extensions and blah, blah. And finally, we get to the end of the proverbial rope here. 
And if I can't pay you, I become your indentured servant and I have to work it off. Maybe I come part-time to work for you, part-time work in my own property, whatever is the legal arrangement. So you see, here's Jesus talking about forgiving that we always look at as an emotion and he's doing it in a legal sense, right? With a bond servant. This bond servant owed this king 10,000 talents. Now, back then, one talent was equivalent to 20 years wages. So in other words, this guy owed the equivalent of about 200,000 years of wages. I'm guessing he's not going to be able to pay that, right? The king looks at him. The guy begs for mercy. He says, have pity on me. Now, the king is in his law room. He's, he's issuing edicts here. This isn't an emotional kumbaya prayer party. And it take, he says, Jesus says, the king takes pity. So the guy had said, please, you will have to put me and my entire family in prison. The king takes pity on the man's family, and he says, all right, I'll tell you what. I will forgive you the entire debt. Now, if you walked out forgiven of all of the debt you ever own or ever will own, like 200,000 years worth, how would you feel? you would go out praising God and thanking him. Well, here's what happens. This servant runs into his bond servant. So a guy owes him 100 denarii. Now a denarii is equivalent to one day's wage. So this servant to the servant owes the servant 100 days wages. Compared to what he owed, 200,000 years, nothing. Now remember, Jesus is expounding on, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us what we owe as we forgive what other people owe us. Okay? And they don't owe us emotion. They owe us something different. We're going to get into that. Well, anyway, servant A, who got forgiven, won't forgive servant B. He's choking him and he throws him in debtor's prison. The king gets furious when he finds out. He puts him in prison. And so clearly the example of forgive us as we forgive others. If we don't forgive, then we're asking God not to forgive us. In the middle of the Lord's Prayer, it's what's called a self-imprecatory oath. You know, David would say, may the sun not set on me if I don't accomplish this, right? Or may God do this or that to me if I don't fulfill that, the prophets would say. It was an idiomatic expression, but it also means May I end up like those people if I don't do what I'm supposed to do. All right? Serious stuff. So, here's the question I have. When that servant came to the king and he owed him 200,000 years, what do you think the king thought of this guy? Oh, wow. I really feel warm and fuzzy about him because, you know, he's such a good manager of his money. I've been able to trust him all the time to pay up. He's always responsible. Every week he works hard. I can count on this guy. No, the opposite. The king didn't trust him or respect him, but he forgave him. Hint, huge hint here. Forgiveness is not tied to trust or respect. Okay, the greatest example ever is the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Suffering at the hands of the Romans and the Jews in ways that no other human ever has nor ever will. Beaten to beyond recognition. And he said seven things on the cross. And one of them, he's looking down at the Roman soldiers, the Jews, the Pharisees that are mocking him, saying, ha, huh, ha, huh, he, he healed others. Can't he get himself off the cross? And you think you have problems with people. Jesus looks down at these soldiers, they're casting lots. Imagine like they're playing cards or throwing dice for his garment. And Jesus is seeing this. These guys treated him like dirt, they hated him. And, and Jesus says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Now, let me ask you this. Jesus is dying the most horrific death ever. Do you think he is saying, now Lord, let's extend my suffering so I have time to process the emotions here uh, so I can properly forgive? Because honestly, I don't like those guys. They beat me to within an inch of my life. My my back is, is uh, an open wound. 
I've been scourged. I carried this cross. I'm suffering unimaginable torture now. They've all mocked me. But you know what? I'd love to just come off the cross, because I like these guys, and shoot dice with them and maybe win my garment back. Now, how absurd is that? But think of when we connect all of our emotions with this legal objective decision Jesus is making on the cross, not driven by his emotions. Father, forgive them. I don't hold this against them. They don't owe me. When Jesus does this, he is freeing them to be dealt with by God the Father the way God the Father wants. What an incredible picture of the gospel. So what did Jesus do? The same thing we need to do. He canceled the debt, my friends. So what does my offender owe me? And I'm sure there are people that have wronged you. You've not had a sit down and worked it all out, but and maybe they don't even know they've wronged you. Maybe you and I have wronged people. We don't know we've wronged them. There's a lot of this going on. It's Corona time. It's time to self-examine a little and make sure I'm clean of this garbage. So when I cancel the debt of someone that has offended me, what am I canceling? What does he owe me? Well, he should come to me and confess his sin or offense, right? That's a good start. Then he needs to repent to me. Oh, I, you know... I did that. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Don't we all want that? Of course we do. How often does that happen? Right? Not much. And then if he owes me anything like money, um, time, or if he owes me restoring my reputation. Uh, you know, I have this prophetic gift. It's gotten me in trouble over the decades. Thank God for my lovely wife. Sandra, I hope you're watching. She has helped me walk through this with people. Uh, I would say, how dare they say that about me? I never even thought that. She said, well, you're going to cancel the debt or not. And I could pull a Bruno and say, mm, you know, I think I want to stew on this a while and think about how I can bust his jaw back. Right? I mean, my Italian blood would get riled. Does that ever happen to any of you? Some of you get riled. Some of you get so hurt, you just want to withdraw. You don't even want to think about what they did because we are focusing real forgiveness, the covenant exchange, the legal release with how we feel. Forgiveness does not mean that I respect and trust and even like that individual. Jesus, I'm sure, thought, you know what? If I got off the cross... They would do that all over again, wouldn't they? Yeah, because of the depravity in their souls. Many years ago when I was pastoring, I was doing a three-week series on forgiveness. Wouldn't you know it, after Sunday number one, I get a phone call from a guy who had, he had really done me wrong. And uh, he said, I'd like to meet with you to reconcile. I, I said, I'll get back to you. <laughs> I didn't say yes right? I'm preaching this, but I'm far from perfect. And I told my wife about it. She said, well, you need to tell him yes. I said, why? I don't want to forgive that guy. He's a blankety blank. I don't trust him. She said, wait a minute. I thought you were teaching all this stuff about forgiveness. And I went back to what I was researching. I'm going, oh no, I'm supposed to just cancel the debt. In other words, I remove any expectation. So-and-so, you don't owe me any more apology. I don't expect you to be nice to me. I don't expect you to throw kind words my way. I don't expect you to be sending me gifts. I don't expect you to go out there and say great things about me and build up my reputation. You literally owe me nothing. Who you owe is the divine judge. So before I went and met with him, I, I, really, I had to get on my knees, and it hurts for me to get on my knees, physically, I mean, not spiritually. And I said, all right, Lord, I choose to forgive. And I went there, and you know the feeling I had? said, I still don't like this guy. And I can't say I trust or respect him because I have not seen him since that time we met. However, if I were to see him again, I'm cool. I have no expectations. He doesn't owe me a thing. I don't know what's going on in his life. I pray the best, whatever happened. So what happened there? Over time, as I made that, that ethical decision, Lord, I cancel the debt. Whatever he owes for whatever he really did, he owes you 
and you will extract that however you want, judicially or through mercy. But you know what? It's none of my business. So I'm out of here, Lord. I'm not going to take that on anymore. And then over time, the emotions come along and you get free of it because when you think of that person, you, you hear the name, you see the face, there are no expectations. Oh, he's a no good. She's never going to. It's gone. It's, you don't even realize it after a while, but when you keep remembering. And I'll tell you, for some people, I've had to go back to the Lord and cancel the debt more than once. Lord, I think I, I put it back in my account. Here it is again. Yeah, they owe you. I want to close with this scripture, very encouraging from James. James chapter 1. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, because the anger of God never works the righteousness of God. The, the, I'm sorry, the anger of man never works the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God meaning the right judgment of God. So here's the question I leave us all with. For people that have offended me, do I want to pull a Bruno and leave the justice in my hands when I can't even trust my own flesh? Or do I want to turn it over to the Lord who is the merciful judge, and let him handle it in the way he sees fit and be free. So my dear friends, unlike Bruno, I want to say to all of us, let us forgive our debtors as he has forgiven us. God bless you. Go cancel the debt. I will see you next time. Ciao.